outbreak of World War I had significant impact on weaponry innovation. In general, this leads to more sophisticated weapon improvement throughout the time. Regardless the way this affected weapon manufacturing, how development compensated each other is an interesting fact to be observed. The advancement of tank technology, for example, has prompted the evolution of anti-tank weapons. In this case, Panzerfaust is seen as one of iconic anti-tank weapons in the history. Not only was it used in the past to combat Soviet tanks during World War II, this armor fist is still now being operated in Russian-Ukrainian war. Since the weapon has been recognized for its record in battles, how effective was it really? And why is it continuing to strike fear in the current war? It all began in 1943, when the Soviet army developed first-class tanks in numbers that Germany had no chance of keeping up. As a result, Germany came up with the idea of creating a tiny, simple, and user-friendly anti-tank weapon that could transform any wielder into a tank killer, called the Panzerfaust. It was basically a tube that fired a rocket-propelled grenade with a shaped charge that could penetrate armor up to 200 feet away. Moreover, this was one of the most powerful weapons of its class at the time of the establishment. However, the limited range of the weapon caused dangers not only to the enemy tanks and soldier, but also to its operators because they might be hit by fragments of the exploding vehicles. Therefore, using Panzerfaust at the time required a great personal bravery. In addition to its drawback, some design defects were found in the earlier production of Panzerfaust. For instance, it was criticized as being excessively heavy for such a one-man portable battlefield device. Besides, it had a tendency to jam while shooting, which was a serious flaw in weapon system that was supposed to work without fail. Most importantly, the weapon did not effectively defeat the most sophisticated armor as promised. These drawbacks had eventually resulted in product redesigns back then. Ever since, Germany has undergone various technical upgrades, which were highly refined in terms of accuracy, range, and adaptability in order to keep up with tank improvements as well as to minimize danger for its users. According to numerous sources, Panzerfaust 1 up to 3, i.e. PZF-30-250, PZF-44, PZF-3 consecutively, have been produced with different variants for each group. For example, the oldest version of the Panzerfaust had six variants dated from 1943 to 1945. The PZF-44 consisted of four variants, and the latest one, which was officially launched in 1992, has developed eight variants so far. Nonetheless, there were only small distinction among variants in each version. Therefore, it is not surprising that most people discuss about the Panzerfaust in general without specifying them. Nowadays, the new generation of Panzerfaust, the PZF-3, has recently become headlines due to its usage in the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. It was developed in 1978 to replace its previous version, the PZF-44, which was unable to penetrate the armor of Soviet T-72 and T-80 tanks. The use of shaped charge warheads, which is highly explosive in the latest version, make it able to penetrate all varieties of tank armor, even the thickest one. Furthermore, all variants of PZF-3 have an effective range of up to 980 feet over moving targets and 1,300 feet against fixed targets. On top of that, this weapon can cause up to 200 damages per shoot. In comparison to bazookas and Panzerschlag, it produced a larger hole when penetrating armor. This triggered massive spalling that could kill or seriously injure the crew and damage equipment. In addition, the recent PZF-3 is recognized for its efficient and lightweight design which enables it to be operated by only one soldier. The controls, such as the pistol grip, were made to be readily used from any position. According to Military Times, the PZF-3 is as deadly as design when it is used by trained soldiers on rough ground, wooded areas, or urban settings, as was the case with the original PZF-44. As further improvement, a computer-assisted sighting and targeting mechanism was applied in the recent variant of PZF-3, that enables the operator to attack enemies at a distance of 1,968 feet. Moreover, it has also built with the warhead consist of plastic granules to minimize backblast by using the recoil as counter mass principle. This could make it safer to fire the weapon from within the limits of a building. Another highlighted upgrade was the development of a tandem hollow charge warhead. 
which allowed an early explosion to activate explosive reactive armor, ERA blocks, used on combat tanks to increase protection. This enabled the armor surface to be cleared for the main charge to come next. More importantly, an optional Dynarange fire control device was also installed in the latest version. The device has a ballistic calculator, laser rangefinder, and optical sight with 3.5 times magnification. This can automatically calculate the target's speed and distance from the shooter, as well as creating an aiming mark on the sighting device's reticle. As a result, this weapon has a relatively high hit probability, up to 1,968 feet against moving subjects, compared to other shoulder-launched anti-tank rockets. Given this rapid improvement, it is no wonder the Panzerfaust still becomes a star in the present day. According to the Dynamite Noble Defense, the improved versions of Panzerfaust III are still among the most capable anti-tank rocket launchers in the world. It has recently proved its worth over again in the recent battle between Russia and Ukraine. Based on the report, the Russian tanks such as T-72 and T-80 can easily be targeted by the PZF-3. This is why most of those tanks are found scattered around Ukraine in a wrecked state. This appears that the PZF-3 is an effective weapon to combat modern armored vehicles. For this reason, they continue to be the best option for infantry units compared to other tank killers. Up to date, the Panzerfaust is currently in service with several countries. For instance, Japan was the first foreign country purchasing the weapon in 1989, followed by Switzerland in 1991. It has since entered the weapon systems of Austria, Italy, the Netherlands, Peru, South Korea, Iraq, and Mauritius. Finally, in February 2022, the Ukraine is included to the list since several supportive Western governments send armaments, including the Panzerfaust III, to strengthen Ukraine's defense against Russia. Overall, although the Panzerfaust had several drawbacks, it remained one of the most effective tank weapons of the war, instilling dread among Allied tank crews forced to drive against it. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.